shows we'd go in there and, and I could come back with a whole bag full of beers, you know. Yeah. There was just some stores that uh, I did and some stores that didn't. I'm talking about me specifically. Yeah, me, me too. Like, like I was afraid. At first. I mean, because, I mean, the thing that made me gun shy was I seen him going to Joe's, right? So I'm like, oh, next time I can do it. So I go up there next time. Negro. <laughs> you got ID? Yeah. And I'm like, Oh man, no! I left it in the car. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly that's the way. <laughs> that was always. <laughs> that was always the way. So and the car is in Ohio. You you got all this beer up here. And said, oh damn it! Left my wallet in the car and walk out and never go back to that store. <laughs> Welcome everybody to another episode of Big Red's Donut Shop. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, really. Seriously, seriously. Welcome back to Old Black Men Conversation. I'm your co-host, David H. Dudley III, a.k.a. Sonny, a.k.a. Sweet Sonny, a.k.a. Delightful Dave, a.k.a. Baker, a.k.a. Cakey. And you are... I'm still the real Cliff Barnes. Whoa! I was just rolling through your AKA. I'm going, man, man, how many times have you been to jail? <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, the AKA is the one kept me out. Oh, okay. Because oh, they come and ask the one person, I say, I'm this one. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. All right. I understand. All of your personalities have a name. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well you know, that used to be how it was. Because I was kind of a relatively rookie in, uh, in downtown Seattle back in the day, so I, I, didn't, I didn't know how to nav navigate anything, so, you know. Yeah, well, downtown, it's like, as, as we grew up, hanging out in Pioneer Square was, you know, uninteresting time, you know. Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, now, if my parents had known I was down there, mm -hmm. Negro. I'd have been under jail. Yeah, well, see, see, the thing is, we start going down there, we're going downtown, and just watching what's going on, you know, and 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 uh, looking at the hookers, hookers on Pike Street. You know, you see, and and, that, and that's what's really interesting to me because that must have been during my Lake Hills time oh, because yeah. I don't ever remember. For me, the first time I was aware of hookers was 14th and Pike. Well, it was still oh, yes, Pike. Or 14th and Yes. Oh, yes. Well, that was the other one. But uh, there was one up and down Pike Street, you know, near Pioneer Square. So we hang out Pioneer Square area, and then uh, um, and then Pike Place Market area, where you know Pike Street would go up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And Still that's where it. they used to have the, the hookers walking up and down the street. Wow. Or as they call it, a whole stroll. Man. And that stroll was up there. And then I think I mentioned this before. We talked, they, there was a place called a Kansas City Steakhouse. And yeah. that's where all the pimps and hustlers and hookers and everybody else would be hanging out. Yeah. The, the only time I remember anything specific around that area, downtown Seattle, was when the uh, they had a Playboy Club. Okay. And yeah. uh, one of our distant relatives mm -hmm. worked at it. Ah, well, see. Matter of fact, she ran it. Yeah, well, see, that was. <laughs> yeah, we didn't do come that. We were too young at that time to do that, but then later on started hanging out in the square because there was a, a lot of entertainment, a lot of bands and stuff, and there was, well, I think the Central is the only one that's still open, I believe. I wore my Central t-shirt for no apparent reason. But the Central, the J&M, Larry's, uh, Swanee's, Comedy Underground, 
was up on, on second and main, also first, but all down first is where they had a lot of entertainment, a lot of live music. And then there was a club across the street from um, the uh, old Swanee's location on second and main called Celebrity. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Celebrity. Yeah, yeah. you remember. Boom. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got a little uh, inebriated there. Oh, really? Well, actually, before I got there. Yeah. And I seen a lady that was I deemed really attractive. And I guess today in today's world, right. they would probably get me for sexual harassment. More than likely. So but I, I just pulled like... I just pulled my stuff out. Hey! <laughs> and you know and Yeah, yeah, I think somebody done <laughs> fun with that today. I think so. <laughs> but you see, that was so liberal. A lot of a lot of a lot of clubs. Yeah. You know, all kinds of things will happen. Yeah, yeah, but obviously I I, ha I had the feeling. But yeah, don't, see the don't. thing is, you know, it was like we'd be over at Swanee's, and then we'd have a pool like, you know, on weekend nights as to what time we would hear the first gunshot, <laughs> because gunshots weren't as common as they seem to be now. But there, you know, you would hear somebody would shoot up in the air. I mean, you know, because everybody wasn't. You know, packing like, yeah. you know, they weren't strapped like they are now, apparently, you know. Yeah, you know what? That rem I remember the one time that sticks out of my mind. Maybe that's why I don't remember those many more times. Mm -hmm. But I think, I'm not sure, I, I, it was a big, it was, I know it was on First Avenue. Uh -huh. They had a big bar, I remember that. Big circle, uh, kind of oblong type bar. And... Went in there with a yeah. with a few folks, and shit. Twenty minutes went by, half hour went by, and one of the fellas went to his pocket, pulled out his pistol, cocked it. Said, "Who I got to shoot to get a drink in here?" Man, was they over there <laughs> after that. <laughs> And I remember thinking, <laughs> you got a gun? Because <laughs> I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. We knew, yeah, well, <laughs> hey, you know, it was, it was like, you know, we'd just be hanging out at, at the bar after a comedy show or something, and then celebrity, you know, and then sometimes, uh, you know, we'd go over to, actually go over to the club because we knew the the doorman, the guy that's in charge of the velvet rope, you know, so. The velvet rope? Yeah, remember you used to always have a rope around the, the line, people are lined up to go in the club, and their line goes in front of the building and down the street, and then right up to here you got a little velvet rope, and then people that were VIP or knew somebody, they would just take open and, you know, you could walk right in, and the line's still going down the street around the block. The velvet rope. Wow, I thought it meant something else. I thought it meant that once you got to the front of the line, it was downstairs. The way you got down was to hop on the rope and slide down the rope. Well, no, that uh, still, still, uh, that wasn't the purpose because it wasn't long but enough. I, but, but, it was well, only, you know, just well, like I, here. I understand that. That, that, right. that. That's just the image but, I had. But we did have some underground clubs, you know. Um, down there in the square. Yeah, yeah. You know, as, as, a matter, as a matter of fact, did, didn't I go to one, or didn't we go to one where where uh, there was a band playing, and they, and it would they what did they call it, Pike Underground. Uh, it was down there near the center. Hmm. Downstairs uh, near the center. Yeah, yeah, and, uh -huh. and, it, and, it, and it was a it was a building, but it was underneath. It was down. Yeah, there were. Wasn't it? Weren't you there? <laughs> I, I got no frame of reference here. <laughs> well, you were down, but you, uh, what year was this? this? This was a couple within the last couple of years. Keyboards. Oh. Keyboards. Tim. It was his band. Well, one of his bands. Okay, Big Tooth. And Dude, I don't know. Downstairs, I don't. You know. I, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you were there. That's well, why. Well, you know. I, but I can understand because when you when you 
go to a lot of bars, you know, as an entertainer <laughs> or to see your friends that are entertaining. You go to a lot of bars and they all start running together. You know, you yeah, have to be, I'm, you have I'm to be sure specific. you're right. <laughs> I just don't. <coughs> you you have I to need. Be and then, especially if it's a place you only gone one time, you go, oh yeah, and you try to remember that, you know. But uh, yeah, it's like back. But like I said, we used to hang out on First Avenue at J and M, which is now closed. Right, right. I, it is. Yeah. Now, I remember J and M. That they used to have a lot of live entertainment there. Some good bands I saw there. Then there was a little thing called a Med Mix. It's, yeah, a, yeah. it's a it's a just a little Mediterranean food. Yeah, place. I, I kind of got then that. Then next man. door was the Central, and then two doors down was a club called Larry's. And they all used to have live right, music. Right, and Larry specialized in the blues? Um, kind of, sort of. You know, cause, it, because uh, the Central had a lot of blues acts too. And then one, um, what was the name of that brother? I remember, uh, Charles White. The Charles White band used to play all of them clubs all up and down there, and you know, they was touring. Do you ever think he met a cold? Because his I, hair was wow, Jack. Well, every time I see him, he had on a hat. Yeah, whenever I see him, he did. But, uh, <laughs> he, he had that, I mean, but yeah, he's uh, cold. He passed, he passed away a while ago. Did he? Yeah, but they had, you know, and, and, and then Larry's got. Larry's close. Remember the incident where the Seahawk they got in a fight and somebody there was a Seahawk down there got involved in it and uh, like he left the bar and these guys had waited outside and they jumped him or whatever. That's where Larry's kind of went down and they closed that up and then uh, so it was he just a session with J and M. Huh? Can't be hurt, athlete. Well, I don't know. Apparently, those people didn't get that memo. Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah. the thing is, it's like when we were hanging out at Swanee's and stuff, right? We took care of the athletes because a lot of, like Swanee, the late Swanee, he passed away earlier this year. Swanee knew a lot of the ball players and and the umpires. So we'd be sitting in the bar, and here's about, here's all the umpires from the game that the Mariners may or may not have won. But a lot of teams would come early to hang out at Swanee's and play the game the next day. So on the day off, they'd fly in. But like, we took care of them when they got, you know, uh, a little a little too inebriated, had too many bears. Yeah. So you had ball players and you had ex ball players that hung out there and knew the youngsters, and so we got to meet a lot of, um, you know, famous, semi famous ball players. Yeah. Some ball players, you know, uh, only a few real serious ball fans could remember those names, and then you had some who were just like, oh, yeah, you know, well, right off the, I remember him, I remember him, you know. So, so they be sitting in there, but you know, it's like uh, one in particular, Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson played for the A's and he was a uh, leadoff hitter and he had stolen a lot of bases. But when he apparently, I don't know if this was all the time, but apparently after a few libations, Ricky would talk in the third person. So you would talk, you say, Ricky. Man, you stole a lot of bases. He said, yeah, yeah. Ricky has stolen a lot of bases. <laughs> and he would do that. You know, it's like, Ricky, you got more leadoff hits than anybody. He said, yeah, yeah. Ricky does have a lot more stolen bases, you know, than anybody this year. You know, and he would, you know, right? So he's sitting over there in, in Swanee's, and then he, it was time he wanted to go. So it was like, Okay, okay, all right. Fifty dollars for somebody to call me a cab, and we're like, Ricky, no, no, the cab is on the way. You remember what hotel you're in? <laughs> you know, because they come down and they stay at several different hotels. Some some teams preferred this hotel. Some was that in Seattle. You know, you had the Hilton and Sheraton and uh, the round ones. 
What are they called? Used to be the Orpheum Theater was in that spot. I miss the Orpheum. But anyway, uh, uh Okay, hold on. I'm... All right. Anyway, we had we had a lot of ball players and stuff that would come into some of the bars in uh First half. Did you ever hang out down there? No, I did. I have no. I just except I was, for that one time, a celebrity. Yeah, yeah. Because basically, like, you know what? During during the time period you're talking about, downtown was like a uh, wow. It was like a hey, you can't go there. You might get in trouble. There's some raw stuff there. Very That's true. That, that. That was what I was getting from my parents. And so, in the back of my mind. I would actually stay away from it, and I, and I hung out with with a, with a different crowd then for a while, and the the whole social thing was was different, mm -hmm. it, and it wasn't a it, it was more of a suburban kind of party thing as opposed to right the central or downtown. So I, I didn't get a lot of experience with that when we when. When I'm talking about when when we were older, when I was hanging out at Swanee's and all that, but when we were younger, we were too young to get into most places because um, they they well they would check ID if because we looked young, I guess <laughs> we were. Some we of us looked younger than others. Who dances? The little corner store where we could go in and we got oh, beer. I There'd be roaches crawling on the counter and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but we was like 19, 20. Yeah. And hop down and dance and, and, and get a case of and beer then, or whatever. And not get, not, not and get a lot of time. Check. Oh, and then a lot of time, remember that little deli was called All Nighties? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times I could get beer there, you know, if I, if I stood up straight and <laughs> put on my adult face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and before things, and, and before we got wise to the fact that we could actually do it ourselves, shit, we go to Mr. White's over there in the CD, yeah, and several pay, places, and, and, and pay him ten bucks to go get us a case of beer, and he come back. We pay him ten bucks, right? That's in addition to the case of beer. Uh -oh. yeah, well. <laughs> no, I got to. I I I started looking older, young. And so I could go in places. There were several stores where I could just go in and buy. Um, I, oh, there was one called Joe's up in Madrona when when Joe. But Joe always ID'd me. No, he never. I go in. Remember, we get them big bottles of yeah. beer. There wasn't four. There wasn't forties yet, but they were the giant, like a quarter, thirty-two ounces or whatever. I go over there, and there was a house we were hanging out at yeah. on thirty-second and. Pike, I guess, a block off of yeah. from where Joe's was, and with that used that store used to be an IGA. Remember those? Yeah. And uh, so anyway, Joe's, we could go in there, and and I could come back with a whole bag full of beers, you know. Yeah. But there was just some stores that uh, I did, and some stores that didn't. I'm talking about me specifically. Yeah, me, <laughs> me too. Like, like I was afraid at first. I mean. Because, I mean, the thing that made me gun shy was I seen him going to Joe's, right? So I'm like, oh, next time I can do it. So I go up there next time, Negro. <laughs> you got an <idea. laughs> idea? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, man. No, I left it in the car. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly that's the way. <laughs> that was always... <laughs> That was always the way. So and the car is in this, Ohio. You, you got all this beer up here and said, oh, damn it. Left my wallet in the car and walk out and never go back to that store. And, 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 that, and that stopped me from doing it for, no, for a while. And then went down to Nancy's and I said, an old Nancy. No yeah. problem. And I'm like, that hey, we can, I can come here. Was that, that was on Rainier? Yeah. Yeah. Rainier and Genesee, I believe. Because I remember our graduation. Did you remember the graduation party? Which one? The one, the one, the one um, that was, oh, it was this big piece of property. The house was here, and there was an orchard in the back. Oh, yeah. And, and Lucretia. Yeah. Okay. Lucre 
Oops, yeah. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Stop <laughs> using government names. <laughs> but no, we were at that party, we, and and everybody <coughs> kept taking me down to Nancy's to get beer. And I had so many beers, I think that might be why I like beer so much now. I had so many beers that night, I think I, I, think I took a nap out in the orchard. And then I remember, um, oh, you remember that girl from Australia? No names. Remember from Australia? Uh, yeah. Her name was Sue. <laughs> <laughs> That's as far as we go. But you remember her anyway. But anyway, uh, enough about that. <laughs> remember her? Lovely lady. <laughs> Probably still is, if she's still yeah. around, I hope she is. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But those places, we just had a few places where they didn't ID. And I told, I, you know, like I said, I looked a lot older than I was. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I finally caught up to it. Now people go, you're how old? You don't look that old. So it's kind of a... Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> It's kind of a weird, weird yeah, flip. Now I look younger than I am and then, and I, I used to look older, older until I caught up to it. Yeah, so weird. yeah. What age do you think was that middle point where you was like, I, I look my age right here? Um, I never really thought about it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just kind, of, it it just kind of gradually happened, you know. And then it's like, when I was legally able to buy alcohol, then I, you know, it was the same. Yeah, well, you know, but but I had more places to do it. Yeah, but you know, it is, <laughs> it's it's funny that as we sit there talking about this. I met someone the other night with someone that I knew, the opposite, right? And wait, what? <laughs> opposite of what? <laughs> what? Wait, what? Opposite sex? Oh, wait, wait, wait. A male and a female. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. And one was older. Look. Oh, looked older mm -hmm. than the other person uh -huh. and I flashed on it because it was like I don't normally notice that but there was such a disparity plus I thought I knew the other I thought I knew the person that looks like was the person who looks old or the other person with the person who looks old the person that looks old oh you thought you recognized them oh yeah yeah and <laughs> I didn't want to say anything, and I was, the whole time I was like, why the hell does it matter? But you know what I was tripping on? That, that there's a point to where we do notice age difference. Um, there, there is a point. Yeah, kind of, sort of. I think it depends on how yeah. the person is aging. <laughs> I hey, mean, Hey, you ever seen that reality show called Cougar Life? And that's the, <laughs> we're and, really, and that's exactly what I was thinking the we're whole really, night. Really old, Got a cougar. yeah. <laughs> really, really old ladies and really young men. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, I was in one of those. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? What is it, King of Non Sequitur? <laughs> <laughs> she was. She had a son my age. Oh, right. So and you you were a cub. Ooh, whatever. And and, <laughs> and, it, and it, it never occurred to me until I saw her daughter and her son at a store, and I went, "What the hell?" Uh huh. Well, you know. Well, you're just like, what? What are you thinking? Yeah. I don't know. But, I mean, if if you if you had feelings at the time, then you just have to go that way. And then once the feelings fade, I guess you have to just extricate yourself safely and yeah, <laughs> safe. Because I know, a, yeah, that, that that was interesting. I I just thought, wow, because I never haven't even thought of it in years, actually. I mean, I I I've dated older women. As a matter of but fact, not not. <laughs> Where the ones that had kids my age, anyway. 
I, 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 I didn't want to expound on that because it, yeah. I just realized that way after the fact, you met her. Oh. Oh my. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we. All right. Word. <laughs> Moving right along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh huh. But yeah, it's amazing the things that you have, that you remember. That it's amazing the amount of things we have to remember now. Yeah. I mean, you know? it's like, where, where did that come from? Uh huh. Say, now I've been tripping. Uh, 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 and I'm amazed at this Kyrie thing. Oh my goodness! No, I'm. I, and the I reason, know it's always yeah. Uh, and I'm not. I'm not even saying he's crazy or anything. Mm -mm. As a matter of fact, I get kind of annoyed because my take is when he posted when he a link to the movie on his Instagram. Mm -hmm. To me, he wasn't promoting the item. He was merely saying, check it out. Well, yeah, his, his, his uh, I guess you would call it rebuttal text, was just saying, you know, I'm kind of what, right there. I'm not, I'm not uh, promoting this whole thing. It's just there's some things in it that I, that I thought I could learn from. And he had that. But, 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 my, but whole, my whole point is, that's a bunch of shit. Because it shouldn't even matter. It's him. It's what he was trying to do. Well, it's yeah. what he was trying to share. Fuck you. Well, well, you know, him and the net are given five hundred thousand dollars to uh, anti-Semitism well, yeah, well. yeah, groups. Well, whatever. Whatever. I'm just saying that's what that's what was on the news. I was watching the sports I, I know. news. I, I, I know. So yeah, but I mean the thing is, um, this is in America. Might, but he might be. This he, is Cuba. This is in America. But he might. But he might be trying to maintain his image because he's had so much other negative stuff. So he might just be don't want it to get. They don't want the hole to get deeper that he might be in. Again, bullshit. The, 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 society, the, society, not not. I'm not saying I, this is what I, I necessarily know. believe. I'm just that. And, well, in actuality, in court, this would be hearsay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it wouldn't be admissible. <laughs> yeah. But no, I'm just saying this is uh, this is what I heard and have have seen. On uh, you know the sports well, I, talk show. I, I, I understand that. What well, I'm, I, what I understand, I'm saying yeah. is, what I'm saying is that's a crock of shit. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I'm saying. I mean, if this is in America, then why? Then then, then <laughs> isn't he allowed to have his own opinion? And if he wants to share something with me, whether whether I agree with it or not, that's up to me. But the whole but, but he's ta he's taking that step and saying, you know what? I think this is pretty cool or pretty whatever. Check it out. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. By the same token, the people who don't agree and and may have taken it out of context or for whatever reason have their right to speak out against it or or against him. It's I think it's a. A never-ending circle that's just going to mm -hmm. be a destruction of things because mm -hmm. you can't have freedom of speech um, any way that you want it. It's You're either free to say what you want to say and people are free to respond how they want to respond. Now what ends up happening is, okay, you're free to say something. They say it and somebody who actually has some power... Mm -hmm. feels away and it's like okay well it's my right to say you can't do this because it has to do with me you know it's my business or whatever and they lose their job the masses will be like nah that's censorship but it's like well hold up I feel away too if he could talk I could talk mm -hmm. so what ends up happening is they, we're just going to end up destroying each other <laughs> well you know that <laughs> yeah well the thing is the consequences to what you say 
are going to be positive or negative. Mm -hmm. So I mean, but you in in our democracy, you have the right to say it. And you know, somebody said yeah. years ago, I don't agree with what you're saying, but I'll fight for the right for you, the right for you to say it. Yeah. So you know, I mean, that's what the whole issue, the whole democracy was supposed to be based upon. But as we got more and more, I don't know, modern, I don't know, modernized, civilized, civilized. We got more civilized as time went on, but we kind of didn't. <laughs> I mean, there's still some horrific things that happen in this society that you know are what? completely I, uncivil. I, but when I sit here and think about it, the reality is we're talking about power, right? Mm, if I had the power, I would make sure that the things I wanted to eat, the things I wanted to drive, the things that I disliked, I would make sure all that changed so it would be perfect for me as I got power. So the more power I get, the more control I want over everything. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Power. Greed. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Greed. Power. Money, you know. But the thing is, uh, you know, I would, I would rather just uh, be able to control my little universe, and what I'm saying, and the rest of it is going to take care of itself. Or not? Oh, it will. I mean, the things I have no, things you have no control over, you shouldn't even deal with. Because it's going to happen, and you can't stop it. So you just have to deal with the things that you got mm -hmm. that you can control, and try to do that well, and survive in the madness. Yeah. But the stuff that's going to happen that you can't control, right there, you already said I can't control this. You know, so that's going to happen. So, 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 how acquainted are you with the? Uh Black Israeli, Isra the Israelites, the black Israelites. The black Israelites, a little bit. I've, I've read some, yeah. I, but I mean, what about them? <laughs> well, I, I think that mainstream black America who may know some of, a little bit about it. Now, mm -hmm. I, I tell you, over there at Ebby's, these are Eb Ebenezer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe about three, or before, right, a little bit before the before the pandemic. There was there was a Sunday afternoon program, mm -hmm. and there was a bunch of speakers lined up, and I think it was honoring. Might have been, but was, uh... one of the speakers that the person that organized the program invited was an Israelite. Mm -hmm. And the brother got up there in the pulpit and started talking. And I I went, what? I mean the whole I mean the audience went, what? Because he was spouting some stuff that should not have been talked about from a pulpit in church yeah <laughs> oh yeah well you know yeah so I, and I, I, and I, and I say that all all that to say I think those of us that are and most who have had some dealings with because there's been a family member in there that was a member of that mm -hmm. those of us that are familiar with it kind of count them as a they got their right to do what they want to do, but this nigga's crazy. It's a kind of a <laughs> fanatical thing. Not, not even fanatical. Not even fanatical. Well, it, well, it's, it's not quite to that point. But it, it's, 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 it's more like the... Uh, who are them people? Uh, the, the, that, uh, the one, uh, the Church of the whatever. Latter-day Saints? Not no. Latter-day Saints, 
but kind of like FD, FDLS. Okay. <laughs> kind of like them. Wait, FDLS? The fundamentalist, the fundamental. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, the, yeah. The fun, fundamental, right. nor, the, apo, the polygamy, nor. Uh, well, there's so many, yeah. but there's so many groups that are in a lot of people's mind extreme. And, 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 they, and you know what? They are to, I mean, to me they're extreme, but to somebody else. I was about to say, they may extreme, not extreme uh, right. could okay. be suggested. Right. And, and I mean, the whole thing is, and even extreme can have, have many definitions. <laughs> have many definitions to many different people. Right, right. And, and I, I think, that th to me, the thing to remember when you get to thinking about all these and the extremes and blah, 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 and this, is that at one point, we're, we're talking religion. Yeah. At one point, at some point, all of these folks, who are, however extreme they may be, were connected to a main thing, and somebody got pissed off and diverted and from that and made their own thing the, yeah. and, and, and they kept doing subdividing like that. Mm -hmm. That's how come we got so many extremes. Yeah. That, well, that mm -hmm. that you and and or I would consider extremes, but other people, that's just normal. What I'm saying is, you got, <laughs> you got somebody's out of 10. Mm -hmm. And you got somebody at a zero and somebody mm -hmm. at a twenty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those, that's what I mean by extreme. Uh -huh. And most of the people are at ten. A, but there's a bunch of groups out there. Uh, yeah, there is. And and even more, uh, there there became even more with social media, with the appearance of social media. Well, I you know I I I, I keep weighing that and thinking about that and that. To you know me, what? to me, that may not be so. To to me, it the, it may be just that now everybody knows about it. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Before social media, you had local or regional or whatever little things, but then once social media was available, now that group is known more beyond beyond just right here, but they got a wider scope, a wider, a wider uh, reachability, yeah. and so that's what I'm saying. It's like the I'm not saying numbers grew up. I'm saying the awareness, people being aware of these groups grew because yeah. some groups started here and now they're national or. You know, they'll start here in this little area, and then they're regional, this end of the country, and so I mean, yeah, there's a lot of them. Yeah, you know, you no, know, what I what I find interesting is that um, before I retired, I was what they would call, I guess, a left wing commie, pinko liberal. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, break that down, okay, man. Uh, uh, really? I don't know what it is, but it sounds like a serious accusation. <laughs> Well, I, I I I was someone who was a, a, a who, who who could be looked at as a communist sympathizer. <laughs> I like a little bit of socialism. McCarthy found a lot of that. Uh, and I like a I like I like a lot of freedom. But there are those who would look at that and say, "Now, you, you like communism? You're a dog. What do you do in this society? That kind of thing." But. Well, why did I start this rant off? I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I like. I mean, I mean, I mean, the thing about it is, I'm not necessarily in favor of communism, but I have read some things that people have determined communist manifestos and stuff like that because, well, hell, I was a sociology major, so I, you know, I wanted to know about communism, socialism, fascism. You know, it's a bunch of isms running around yeah. mm -hmm. that, you know, I, you know, I'm not necessarily going to be, you know, all of a sudden I'm not going to go, well, boom, I'm going to throw away all my values and accept this. I, I feel that in spite of all of it, I feel fortunate to have been born in this country compared to what I see around the world, you know. But I can only say that because I've never experienced 
the other side of the world right. or right. another societal right. group. You right, know? right, 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 right. I've, I've, I've never experienced being a a white male in a in a white dominated society. Mm -hmm. I have no clue what that's like. I've never I've never experienced being a black man in a black dominated society. Well, I I I've actually have 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 uh, been a black child in a black dominated society. I had no idea that anybody else could be mailmen, own stuff, have grocery stores, uh, mm -hmm. have homes, other than those blacks that worked for them, because I could see the blacks that didn't work for them down here on the same damn street. Mm -hmm. But but that was a small part of well, the, a greater society. Well, yeah, yeah, but I, but, but I didn't know that. So I grew up for a few years and up to the point of being, I was actually in school with a society that I saw the white society over there, but it didn't really, uh, I didn't connect with it. It had nothing to do with me. And, yeah. and so when I came, when we moved out here to the West Coast, mm -hmm. to the Pacific Northwest, mm -hmm. it was bewildering because Culture shock. there wasn't, where are all the black people? Where are all the black companies? Where are all the black businesses? Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a, for me, that was like a, what the hell? Mm -hmm. You know? And then to get to the point of where years later, when I'm in high or just out of high school, and we have all these folks trying to start businesses, and it's not mm -hmm. sinking. I, I still don't get it. I'm, I, I'm like, well, why don't you just go back to where I grew up at? You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. No, but the whole thing is, it's like, and a lot of a, a lot of reasons. I didn't want to go back. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I. You know, I, I understand. I understand. Whether that. I, whether I but, was here or wherever, my parents would have taken me. But, but, but it, it yeah. used to annoy me that we were having a black business dollar day or whatever because it's like, look. <laughs> that annoy me too. Hey man, you remember Black Front? Yeah, I, I, and 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 that and, and that's the kind of stuff and. That's the kind of stuff my mom and dad would say, okay, we're going to invest X amount of dollars in this. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, why? Well, yeah, no. <laughs> Oh, wait. Why for, don't you just go back to where for, we came from? For for those of y'all that, that, well, a bunch of y'all that are too young to remember, Black Front was a supermarket that was located in the central area, and it was a takeoff on a big gigantic chain store pre uh, what is that pre Kmart called White Front, and so the people who started it just took off took and became Black Front. So you know, because there was a gigantic superstore White Front up on uh, 125th and Aurora, and then it eventually closed. But so did Black Front. But there was only one Black Front. And White Front was a, and you know it failed for various reasons, like a lot of black businesses in, in and around this area. Yeah, and and, and a lot and a lot of that was, because my parents had one, that didn't they they didn't fail but anyway. Uh, no, I mean, hey, <laughs> uh, just, what 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 happened was because. This, everyone here, for the most part, a lot of people here in Seattle are Seattle born and bred, and a lot of transplants. And the transplants were the one, for the most part, coming in, well, yeah. trying to start stuff. Yeah. But they needed the cooperation of the older ones that were here, and it, and they never meshed. They mm -hmm. never meshed. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there was only one that I can think of 
bank business that sort of seceded. And that was only after the blacks were then in the majority. And that was, and that was a KYC. The facts, the medium, they're still happening. What about Parnell's yeah. corner store? How long have they been there? I well, Parnell's, is, uh, Mr. after Mr. Parnell passed away, Mr. Lee has it now. It's, uh, oh. it's owned by uh, Chinese. Okay. I think they're Chinese. And, uh, you know, but... Well, I'm, you know, I'm he, sorry he, he, I forgot never, about the facts, because the facts, the facts no. owner and the facts uh, starter... Fitzgerald Beaver? ...was from Asheville. So is. I shouldn't have forgot that. Mm -hmm. He did go back and... and and then, where we, I was born at. Yeah, and then you still have, uh, you still have, um, the KRIZ. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I yeah. mean, you have but, a, but, you have but, a but like I said, like I said, you know, what I said was back in the day, the only right. that I can, was. But, but the facts was back in the day. The facts was. Yeah, but the facts wasn't succeeded. It didn't succeed until Beaver died. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and, 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 and his daughter took over. Well, anyway, but it's still around, and it's yeah. still, um, you know, yeah. a kind of an institution in in uh, journalism in the I Seattle agree. area. But anyway, there, you know, you're right. A lot of business. Um, we used to have gas stations and stuff, so you know, yeah. we'll talk about that at another time, though. Yeah, all right. So, uh, Coolio. It's time. That's it's something I know about. Okay. <laughs> Coolio, <laughs> Gangster <of> Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, it's, it's time for us to get on up out of here. That's true. Uh, be safe. Have fun out there. And it's supposed to the channel. What? Nothing. Uh, no. Oh. So anyway, uh, yeah, y'all be safe out there because there's supposed to be some white stuff coming pretty quick through here. It's so. raining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, all right. Good I'm, week. Peace out. I'm still Cliff Barnes. He's still everything Everybody. that starts with a D. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>